do your job. Hey everyone, Sundowner here, and welcome back to Bioshock Infinite. So we had just arrived at the New Worker induction after leaving Thington's docks. Kinda left Elizabeth in a little bit of a bad mood, but hopefully we can turn her back round. But let's say we head up into this building and see what's going on. I don't know why that guard is standing like that, but we'll just leave him for now. So someone suggested in the thread that if I am strapped for cash that I should use my possession power on the machines. I didn't know this, but well, there's a reason why I don't often do it, and that's because it usually causes trouble. So you can see I'm already getting fought here. Now obviously that isn't going to happen most times because you'll usually find one of these vending machines when you're on your own, but you just want to be careful that there's no uh, potentially enemy guards around. Relatively easy to deal with this time, but I don't know, keep that in mind. Your gunsmith. Who sent you to find this person? Daisy Fitzroy. She's either a great hero or the worst of scoundrels, depending on who's doing the telling. She's good for an airship. I don't care if she's the Queen of Holland. What you tell those stuff shirts? You say, I ain't no slave. I ain't no fool. I am a fake man and proud of it. Not a whole lot going on in here for now. This building would be essentially a job center or where you would come to get some hard labor. But as we're going to find out soon enough, there isn't much going as it seems. For now though, we're going to head in here and check out this voxophone. Mr. Fink has something to say. The truth is, I don't have a lot of time for all that Prophecy nonsense. I tell you, belief is, is just a commodity. And old Comstock, well, he does produce. But like any tradesman, he's obliged to barter his product for the earthly ores. You see, one does not raise a barn on song alone. <laughs> no, sir. Well, that's fink timber, a fink hammer, and fink's hand to swing it. <laughs> he needs me. Lest he soil his own. Grab that lockpick. So, of the many hours that I've played this game, I have never seen this blue glow around an object that Elizabeth has spotted. I don't know if this was added in a patch or if I was really that unobservant for the four or five times I played through this game. Nevertheless, that's interesting to see even now, this many months after release, and I, I swear, I swear I'm not crazy, I've never seen that before. But what the hell, it's pretty useful and we can use that for the few times that it seems to pop up in gameplay. If we head round here we could find an infusion, another upgrade, and of course I'm going to put it into salts, but first we need Elizabeth to use her lockpicking skills to open the door. Okay. All done. Feel better already. Alrighty, I think it's time to find our way out of here, but not before we hear a little speech. going to get into Finkton. Illegally. Let's look for another way in. That's an oddly patronizing machine, but nevertheless, let's find a more precarious way to get out of here. Elizabeth, a little help? Here we go. Over there, a service elevator. I should take us down to Finkton. And get ourselves killed in the bargain. So 
So initially I had forgotten that this side also takes you to the same area but I figured I would come and double check that it wasn't another separate room. It just turns out to be the other side of the same room that we would have come into otherwise. Done. So it seems like we have at least one motorized Patriot to deal with. Well, good thing I brought the volley gun because that's going to prove to be very useful in combination with the shock jockey for pretty much the entirety of this fight. So sit back and enjoy as I destroy everything in this room without barely moving a muscle. Oh god, that is just too satisfying, but I am actually going to take it off at some point. I really do want to show off some of these melee assassinations, and it's really hard to do that when your melee kills are extremely overpowered. Yeah, I'm starting to feel just a tad overpowered. I may even be able to nudge up the difficulty just for the sake of it, but I don't know, there's something fun about annihilating absolutely everything by blowing their heads off and electrocuting their bodies. So let's see about taking off that extremely overpowered melee combination of gear. I think for now I'm just going to stick with the one that decreases weapon reload times because that's still pretty useful and will give me a chance to mess around with some of the more uh, interesting melee assassination animations. I will eventually return back to using these pieces of gear because I can't get enough of it but for now we'll take it off. There isn't a whole lot to see in this particular area, so all we're going to do is go in here and check out the Voxophone before heading off into the next area. I hold in my hand the private journal of Comstock's wife. It puts the lie to this miracle child nonsense. She loved the child not. It seems the sainted lady would have preferred to let the seed of the prophet just dry out on the bedsheets. That's a pretty unsmiling way to put it, but nevertheless, it certainly paints an interesting picture. It appears Lady Comstock isn't so thrilled about Elizabeth and her presence in Columbia. But fortunately for us, Elizabeth actually has something to say about it. It's Slate's locker. He must have worked here. Uh, this is my mother's diary. Why would Slate have it? My husband claims the child was created from whole cloth by divine will. I am a believer, but I am not a fool. His bastard shall not be raised under this roof. My mother. She had me locked in that tower. Elizabeth. I just want to get out of this city. Please. Greetings. My name is Jeremiah Fick. And I want to share with you my personal creed. What is the most admirable creature on God's green earth? Why, it's the bee. Have you ever seen a bee on vacation? Have you ever seen a bee take a sick day? Well, my friends, the answer is no. So I say, be the bee. Be the bee.
Maybe you should... Um, hello? Mr. DeWitt? Uh, yes? Hold for Mr. Fink, please. What's going on? DeWitt, Fink here. Listen, my boy, we've had our eye on you, and I can tell you right now that you are our top candidate. Top! <laughs> now, uh, my associate, Mr. Flambeau, will help you with anything you need. <laughs> what the hell was that? I have no idea. He seems oddly pleased to make your acquaintance. Well, the man's got an ego. some shady establishment. You see, the Fink Company store brings you Fink products at a price designed specifically for the Fink worker. Mr. DeWitt, welcome to Finkton. You'll find a variety of supplies here that should see you through your visit. What does Mr. Fink want with us? Excuse me, miss, but Mr. Fink's interest is strictly in the gentleman. But why... So sorry, young miss, but any questions regarding the gentleman's application should be taken up with Mr. Fink directly. Does this strike you as good news? Doesn't strike me as good news. We need a quarter order here to all half done a coal from Fink Manufacturing to Shantytown. What do you Starting think? Head to the gunsmith or minutes. scavenge supplies minutes. by the clock shop? Now bid 14. Will you give me 14? 10. 10 minutes bid, now 10. Will you give me 9? 9. I nine bid 9. Bid. Now 9. Will you give me 8? 9 minutes bid. Now nine. So while these people pawn off their work hours, I'm going to go over here and check out some of the area before moving on to Chen Lin's weapon shop. Serve to rile up the cat. That poster. There's another cipher on it. Huh. So we need to find the code book? Yes. Hmm. Looks like everything's been impounded at the Good Time Club. Maybe that's where we'll find it. So just to save some time, going to the Good Time Club at this point would be a little bit redundant because it tells you to leave. So we're just going to go to where we would go normally and then eventually we'll get to the Good Time Club. For now we're going to head over to the opposite corner of this map for a pretty interesting experience. That song before. I don't suspect anyone's heard that song. I'll just say now, things are going to start getting interesting from this point onwards. Keep an eye out. Anyway, let's head over to Chen Lin's and see if we can get those weapons for Daisy. You know, I wasn't born deaf. <laughs> I hear what it is people are saying. Uh, uh, why is it, Mr. Fink, that uh, we have to Here work? Here it is, Chen Lin, gunsmith. Oh, uh, let's be clear. I would like nothing more than to shorten your work day. <laughs> I have a pressing need to speak to this so-called false shepherd, stirring up so much trouble. 
We got enough problems without this damn fool shooting up the city and blaming it all on the Vox. Though if he's amiable, yeah, yeah, he might be just the fellow we need for our immediate concerns. about this. That's Gautama Buddha. Who? The founder of Buddhism. Spent 49 days under a Bodhi tree until he achieved enlightenment. Something tells me Comstock doesn't cater to idols getting worship that ain't him. Hello? Hello? Mr. Lin? Chen, Lin, is anybody here? What happened here? Someone worked this place over. Local constabulary, no doubt. <laughs> Do you hear that? There's someone downstairs. Excuse me. Ma'am, I'm sorry to bother you. I... We're looking for Mr. Lin. Mr. Chen Lin. Booker. Mr. Lin, not here. He... gone. Gone? They take... flying squad. I pray, Gautama Buddha. Pray, give husband back. Give back to Mei Lin. Where did they take him? Club. Everyone take to good time club. Where is this club? <laughs> Ma'am, please, where, where is this club? Booker, we'll find it. Just leave her be. Why not Vox Populi help Chen Lin? Why not Daisy Fitzroy help Chen Lin? <laughs> Who is flying squad? Cops. The kind who probably got their boot on Lin's throat asking him how well he knows Daisy Fitzroy. Isn't she the one we're working for? As a matter of fact, it is. Come on, let's figure out where this good time club is. Oh, that was weird. The heck was that? Oh, there it is again. Oh boy. Oh boy. No, oh, that's not good. God, this guy's going crazy. I don't I don't know what to do. I want those Thunderbolts to do a lot of damage. That's pretty much all my health gone and wow, I can't believe I survived that. Surely I can find some way to escape. Uh, uh, no, 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 fucker! Alright, real talk. The handyman fights are pretty damn frantic and get a little bit intense, I'm not gonna lie, so I may have intentionally died just to show that off, but now we're gonna try and kick his ass and be a little bit more mobile and on the move than I was before because standing still and trying to fight a handyman that doesn't, that just don't even do that, that doesn't make sense. You're gonna to wanna to be on the move constantly while fighting these guys. Except when you're silly like me and stop to equip different pieces of armor. Whatever reason he doesn't spot me here, but not before long he does. Now there is a spot on the center of their chest, you may get a good look at it at some point. 
If you hit that, you're going to do a little bit of extra damage. I believe it may even be a crit, but it's pretty hard to hit. There's even an achievement for killing it only by hitting it in the chest or in the heart. That's not something that I'm going to do during this fight. Certainly not going to attempt to try and always hit the heart. Because of how frantic he is and the level of accuracy required, I figured it'd be best just to not attempt to do that for this fight. Instead, I'm going to try and move around a lot, use my stun with the shock jockey, and deal damage wherever I can. Now this particular arena, for lack of a better word, isn't one of the better ones for the handyman fights. There are a few more, and they're certainly more interesting and more diverse. This one is pretty straightforward, there's only a couple of hooks, and essentially just one big circle to move around in. So I tend to just stay in one area and zip back and forth as much as I can. So I'm going to shut up for the rest of this fight because there's some pretty interesting dialogue from the handyman himself. So listen out for that and I'll be back in a moment. So yeah, in the end it's actually pretty depressing fighting one of these guys because they're kind of fighting against their own will, it would seem. I don't much care for you, Mr. Twit. I must admit, you know your way around a brawl. Can you get this open? I've never seen a lock like this. Anti-pressure device, a spring-loaded wiper, a relocker? You'd need a battering ram to open it. I'm sorry about what I said at the docks. Calling you a thug. Yeah. Can't see how I might have changed your sense of that. You protected me. Job's a job. Interestingly, it seems like the Good Time Club is prepared for Mr. DeWitt. So, find out what happens next time when we head into the Good Time Club, and until then, my name is Sundowner. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.